This video is a brief overview of JASP, how it's laid out and what features it has. So let's go ahead and get started. JASP is basically a free software. It's actually a GUI that wraps around R. If you're familiar with R software, you may or may not be. It's free software that is very popularly used for statistical um, and data analysis. JAS just makes R friendlier. It does pretty much what you would find in a introductory to intermediate statistics course. So that's basically what you're going to find in it. And it is quite friendly, easy to use um, compared to a variety of softwares that I've used with my students. It's probably been the easiest for the most part. Um, however, there's a few limitations and so forth. And I'm going to give you just a basic tour of it in this video so you get an idea of what's there. What you'll see is these triple lines here showing a drop down. And from there, there's an open option. When you go to the open option, that lets you open a data file and pull it into a JASP. Um, here you have your recent files that you can pull back in, or you can browse through your computer to find them. Um, if you have data from OSF, that's a, a open science data place that you can get data and so forth. And um, then there's a data library built here into um, the software. So for example, if you're into t-test, there's some sample data here that you can pull into the software. One of the things that's really nice is that you can pull in um, so data in from practically any software, any software format. You can pull in a CSV or Excel file. You can pull in an SPSS file, a STATA file. Um, I have not tried pulling in a SAS file, but um, so I'm not sure on that one that that's something you could try. It probably can because it pulls in pretty much every other type of data file that's popularly used. So that makes it really convenient. In fact, it just pulls it in so easily that you don't even have to think about it. You just you just um, click on computer, browse to where you want to go, click on the file, and and it will pull it right in without asking a lot of questions or making it really complicated for you. It's fairly straightforward, and maybe I'll, I'll demonstrate some of that in another video. Um, there's a variety of preferences you can set here. Not a huge number of preferences, um, but there are some. One being you can um, identi identify for it what missing values mean for you and your data. These first four here are here by default. Okay, and the negative nine is one that I added in because I, a lot of my data sets use negative nine to represent a missing value. So if you add in here anything else that in your data set represents a missing value, then it will automatically treat that as a missing value. So that's something that's um, helpful. Another thing to be aware of is you can um, tell it how many categories there needs to be before it thinks it's automatically, you can change it, that automatically thinks that your data is scale or interval ratio instead of categorical. So right now it's set at 10. So if I had, um, if there's um, 12 different levels of data in my, in a variable, it will by default, read it in a scale, meaning interval ratio. But if there's only five, it will by default read it in as categorical. And again, I can change that and I'll show that in a later video. Um, some options here on results, okay, display exact p-values or using exponent notation or the number of decimals you want to round to. You can, you can adjust that and a um, variety of other things. Some of these are a little bit more complex things you probably wouldn't use. What you do want to know about is that up at the top, you have these various options for doing analysis. These are the ones that are included here um, by default. And um, in various videos, I'll show you how to use them. We have descriptive statistics, t-tests, ANOVAs, mixed models, regression, um, frequencies, factor analysis, reliability is when I add it in, and let me show you how to do that. Um, over here, this blue plus shows you other types of analyses or modules you can add in. And you can see here that I've checked the um, reliability box because I, I work with scales a lot, so I, I like to find reliability, so that by default now, for me, we'll always have the reliability um, 
um, drop down available to me but you can see that there's there's some other options here okay and that you can find another thing real briefly to be aware of when when you start working in JASP is that it's updated quite often um, so me working as a professor find that if I don't update just before I start a new semester and I've asked my students to download JASP on their computers theirs might look slightly different from mine so that's something to be aware of is it it often is updated um, to reflect new things that they're trying to add new features into it so that's that's something to be um, to be aware of here I also want to show you that if I have a data set in here let's assume that I have this data set in here um, you'll see it laid out um, like a spreadsheet and you can toggle between seeing the data set and seeing information about your analyses so let's say I want to do some descriptive statistics I just have clicked on that particular item. I want to use descriptive statistics. Let's just say that I, I put um, a couple items over here. I'm not going to go through this in real detail. You'll see I've got over here what I want to do with some options. And on this particular side, I have my output that can be saved um, either in part or in full in, in various ways. So that's something to be aware of but then there's a I can toggle back to my data set if you see this little data here this little triangle here click on that shows my data or I can click back here to hide the data and go back to my analyses